Buchenwald concentration camp was one of the largest camps established by the Third Reich, and around 280,000 prisoners would pass through the gates there. But there were around 130 subcamps and satellite sites that belonged to the Buchenwald complex, and in these the inmates would be forced to work for the SS industries. Many of these subcamps were small, but one of the largest was Ordruf, a forced labour site which was known for immense brutality and suffering. When the Americans liberated the site, they were incredibly shocked by what they saw, with many corpses lying all around the site, outside of the barracks. It was one place of many, during the Second World War, where the Nazis and the SS carried out horrific crimes and imposed such suffering onto the prison population. Inside they also found gallows and other objects which were used to torture and kill prisoners on a daily basis. Join us today as we look at the horrific executions of the prisoners of order of concentration camp. Remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Urdorf Concentration Camp was established towards the end of the Second World War in November 1944 as the war was very much turning against the Germans. It was founded in Urdorf, south of the city of Gotha in Thuringia in Germany. It was created initially as a forced labour camp, which was overseen by the SS main economic and administrative office, and then it was adopted by Buchenwald as one of its subcamps. Throughout its time in operation, over 56,000 prisoners died inside of Buchenwald itself, and it was a place where there was a huge and alarming lack of food, and the guards would inflict such suffering onto the inmates. Executions were conducted there through shooting, and also hangings to strike fear into the hearts of the prisoners, and Urdruf was one of the largest subcamps belonging to the complex. The camp used huts which were built in 1940 for Wehrmacht soldiers, and they used other facilities nearby, and it was designated codename Außenlager S3. It had a north and south camp, and also a tent place where prisoners were housed, and the site used forced labour to help the railway infrastructure in the area. A huge construction project was designed, along with building a huge communication centre in the basement of the Mühlberg Castle in the local town of Erdruf. The prisoners were forced to connect the castle to the main railroad junctions and lines, and they were also ordered to dig the tunnels into a nearby mountain, which were then planned to be an emergency bomb shelter for the trains. This communication centre was never finished as the war came to a close, and the Americans advanced. But by late 1944, 10,000 prisoners were housed inside of Ordruf, and they were kept there until the end of the war. The prison population grew, as by March 1945 there were 20,000 people sent there, and these were mostly Russian, Polish and other prisoners of war from occupied lands. But the problem with the camp was that coupled with the brutal hard labour conditions, the camp was a disgusting, lice-ridden site where many people were dying each day. The conditions were disgusting and there were no beds inside the huts and prisoners were only given straw which was often covered in blood to sleep on and lice would spread disease there. Prisoners were sometimes not always housed inside the huts and some were held inside of stables, tents and destroyed buildings that were falling into disrepair. All of this left prisoners susceptible to death and disease, but also they were given little clothing, which would protect them from the cold, as the winter of 1944 was bitterly freezing. Prisoners would get hypothermia, and this would all lead to the death toll rising. Despite there being no gas chambers at Ordruf, and like sites such as Auschwitz, the plan by the SS was to work the prisoners to death, and use the extermination through labour policy to inflict such suffering. The workday was extended to 14 hours a day, and this was very heavy work in which prisoners were forced to build roads, railways and tunnels, often in the freezing cold, and they were also forced to march long distances to work sites each day, and they were given very little food and clothing to help them. Accidents were also common, and there were hardly any toilets and wash basins, and there was also no medical facilities, meaning that if a prisoner got sick, they would simply succumb to their death. But this is ultimately what the SS guards wanted there. In January 1945, more guards were sent from Auschwitz, and as the war was coming to an end, the prisoners were put to task doing a more sinister job for the Nazis. They were ordered to begin construction on an underground headquarters for the government, as it was looking likely that Berlin would fall, but this would have been where Hitler and other prominent Nazis would have commanded the war from if they'd evacuated the city. Many of the tunnels dug by the prisoners still have not yet been discovered, and many think the Germans may have been using the facilities that the POWs were building as a test site for nuclear weapons and bombs, or as a test site for other rockets such as a V2 and other wonder weapons. Those who were unable to work were taken by the SS to other camps, 
where it was planned they would be exterminated and killed. When the Americans and the Allies were advancing towards Erdroth, there were mass evacuations that occurred at the camp, and almost all of the prisoners were sent to Buchenwald on a death march. During this, the Hitler Youth and the SS massacred and executed around a thousand prisoners, with their bodies being buried inside of mass graves, which were then opened and then burned by the SS to try and conceal their crimes. The SS killed most of the prisoners of the North Camp, who were considered too ill to walk, and they were taken to the parade ground under the false pretense that they were going to be fed. Whilst expecting food, they were all shot dead by the SS, and the bodies of the prisoners were left lying in the open. It's believed that around 3,000 prisoners were executed through exhaustion, and also execution on the gallows there, and ultimately 7,000 prisoners were killed at the Urdruf concentration camp. It was liberated by the American 4th Armoured Division on the 4th of April 1945, and also by the 89th Infantry Division. It was the first camp which was liberated by the Americans, and when they entered the site they saw the true horror. They came across huge piles of bodies, many of which had been covered in lime in an attempt to dissolve them, but others were charred because the SS had attempted to burn them. General Eisenhower was summoned days later to view the camp, along with General Patton and Bradley. He described what he saw as, the most interesting although horrible sight that I encountered during the trip was a visit to the German internment camp near Gotha. The things I saw beg a description. Whilst I was touring the camp I encountered three men who had been inmates and by one ruse or another had made their escape. I interviewed them through an interpreter. The visual evidence and verbal testimony of starvation and cruelty was so overpowering as to leave me a bit sick. In one room, where there were piled up 20 or 30 naked men, killed by starvation, General Patton would not even enter. He said that he would get sick if he did so. I made the visit deliberately, in order to be in a position to give first-hand evidence of these things if ever, in the future, there develops a tendency to charge these allegations merely to propaganda. Another soldier described what he saw, saying, We walked into a shed and the bodies were piled up like wood. There are no words to describe it. The smell was overpowering and unforgettable. Eisenhower was greatly affected by what he saw, and he wanted answers. General Patton described it as one of the most appalling sights he'd ever saw, and he stated that, In a shed was a pile of about 40 completely naked human bodies, in the last stages of emaciation. These bodies were lightly sprinkled with lime, not for the purpose of destroying them, but for the purpose of removing the stench. When the shed was full, I presume its capacity to be about 200, the bodies were then taken to a pit a mile from the camp where they were buried. The inmates claimed that 3,000 men, who had either been shot in the head or had died from starvation, had been so buried since the 1st of January. When we approached with our troops, the Germans began to remove the evidence of their crimes. Therefore they had some of the slaves exhume the bodies and place them on a mammoth griddle composed of 60 centimetre railway tracks laid on brick foundations. They poured pitch on the bodies then built a fire of pine wood and coal under them. They were not very successful in their operations because there was a pile of human bones, skulls, charred torsos, on or under the griddle, which must have accounted for many hundreds. Erdruf concentration camp was a shocking sight for the Allied liberators, and as it was the first sight liberated by the Americans, more horror of the system established by the Third Reich would eventually be uncovered. It belonged to a network of camps in which more evil and execution occurred within the fences, and it was a place which, despite only being open a number of months, resulted in the deaths of thousands of inmates and prisoners. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.